after I finished um, a very important step in my career and I was just in this kind of transition phase and it just helped me tremendously to kind of leave behind um, my, my prior engagement and to uh, start a new one. Hello, my name is uh, Victor Wilhelmi. I'm the director of the Clinic Buchner Wilhelmi in Marbella. And uh, today I will be talking about my own fasting protocol. Um, we've grown up with this, uh, basically uh, got it with the mother milk. Uh, I did my first fast when I was uh, 16 years old. Uh, not really recommendable to those out there, but I was just very curious and, you know, my, I did a very light kind of fast just to know what my family has been talking about all these years. And um, throughout the years, I have uh, added little things that uh, I'm just, you know, as you do more fasts, the more you realize how your optimal day is, is structured. And maybe I hope that you will have some, it will give inspiration to the people out there. I stress this is my own protocol. So I'm just because uh, everybody is different and should make their own experience. But this is what has uh, really served me well uh, through the fast that I do twice a year for 12 days. So I fast twice a year, uh, typically in the beginning of the year and then towards autumn. Uh, usually 12 days because it's a nice arrangement of time that I can make uh, separate. I usually check into the clinics. So, I mean, because it's just the most complete um, environment with all the services that we have. Uh, and I would say the two fasts are a little bit different depending on when it is. The first fast is just the beginning of the year. You kind of I always like to have a, a project with me that I like to contemplate. Maybe we want to do some renovations here. Maybe we have a new project, uh, these kind of things. And then I bring a lot of material to read. I call a lot of people and I really take my time. And the first fast in the beginning of the year is really more of, um, yeah, you know, so much has happened in a year and we have not really the space to really um, process it. So I really think about the last year, I think about the next year, I write a lot of things, just ideas that come spontaneously. And um, the second half of the year in autumn is more of the reverse. I look more back and it's maybe more also a, a body fast, maybe I do a bit more sport. It's after the summer, you know. Um, so it has a bit of a, a different energy as well. Um, so usually what I do is when I f follow the uh, our protocol here in the clinic, you know, with the first salt day and maybe the viewers already know our step-by-step our -step program from, from the clinic. So maybe I will just take um, a day in the middle of the, of the fast because it's re more representative of how what I do every day. So I wake up in the morning quite early with the sun usually. Um, I go to the nurse, I get my usual checkups, and then uh, I always go for the walks. The walks are just such an amazing thing to start. If you have a walk at 8 o'clock in the morning and then at 8.45 you're finished, you feel already like you have accomplished something in the day. And sometimes it's also a nice way to connect with others who are also doing the walk, but sometimes I also do it alone because depending on the day, um, those fast regularly will know this sometimes you feel a bit more introspective and maybe you don't want to see other people and other times you feel a bit more maybe you're a bit more energetic and you want to connect with others in the in the community so i do my walk then i come back then here we offer a session of uh, qigong which is more of a relaxation exercise so it's with movement so you do you're a bit more consciously uh, inside yourself but combined with some movement so that's very nice so then i go usually to my room i i read something maybe i take a nice long shower this kind of thing um, i then have my my lunch and then depending if i was more active or if i'm um, maybe a bit more rested or a bit more like i, I don't feel so uh, more of a con contemplative i I have either a juice or I have a soup. The juice is if I need a bit of, you know, extra extra push and otherwise I, I will have the soup maybe to get a bit more into, into ketosis. 
and then um, I will usually do the liver pack. So it's a nice hot pack uh, on your liver, which stimulates and you do a nap. I normally in my working life don't take naps, even though I would love to. But just the fact to go back into bed, to get tucked in, to have a nice warm water bottle is just so relaxing because also sometimes in uh, fasting your sleep is a little bit choppy. So just to have that extra rest uh, during lunchtime, is just uh, after lunch, is just a fantastic thing to do. And then the afternoon is usually more uh, creative work. So I write a lot, maybe I go to our creative atelier, um, I, I call people, I read. So this is really like I, I, I kind of primed my body. I got my movement out of the way. I'm very relaxed after the walk. And then I, I have this mindset where my, my energy, my creative energy, my mind works the best. So I try to keep the, the afternoons or empty or I take a massage. It's also really nice to have a um, massage during fasting, not only for relaxation, but also to liberate all the things that have accumulated in our tissue to kind of bring it into movement. So if you do a deep tissue massage, some people even have um, emotional reactions to that. So it's just a very, very good time. And then even if you have an emotional reaction, you're in this contemplative energy uh, in, this, in the afternoon. So I really enjoy doing it like this. And then um, at night, I will have a soup. So no juice at night. I will always have the soup so that I, it's better for my digestion. It kind of calms me more. And um, no, sorry, before I have the soup, I take a sauna. So this is, I mean, this is then really the ultimate relaxation. You take a little bit of the cold and afterwards um, you're just, I mean, ready. You have a soup and then maybe a little bit of reading and then you go to bed. So this will be more or less my, my usual fasting, fasting rhythm. And I can really recommend to other people I know prioritize a, a, a different order. So maybe they will have their unit of movement in the afternoon, will have a more relaxation moment, or will have a massage in the morning. So everybody has to find their, their own uh, rhythm. But um, this is my rhythm and I really follow it every day and it, it's just uh, makes you, you know, you go to bed and you feel accomplished, you feel great. And um, you just find these kind of uh, natural rhythms again. I, I had one p particular fast that was very, well, two maybe, that were very, very memorable to me. Uh, the first one was after I finished um, a very important step in my career. And I was just in this kind of transition phase. And it just helped me tremendously to kind of leave behind um, my my prior engagement and to uh, start a new one so you really have this mental shift and you know sometimes you need these kind of rituals and people these days they just go from one thing to the other and they don't give themselves the time to make this transition and often you're not emotionally there and you're already starting something new and then maybe also you don't listen to how you feel you don't process these things and so you maybe rush it a little bit too much and for me it was a perfect kind of glue binding those two things together and it gave me the time to to transition the other fast i did was was very memorable was for another reason it was for a big study we did uh, with the cnrs in uh, strasbourg where i had almost every bodily fluid <laughs> measured that i have uh, for a scientific purpose and we had a very strict kind of protocol but the, um, it was a group exercise, so just I was very in a very group setting uh, where everybody would compare all our values, and it was so interesting to see the results and the different people, and also how the, it affected them mentally. So it was really like um, I, I was part of a clinical study, studying everything and living with the test subjects, being myself a test subject, and we did a wonderful study that we uh, then later also published also checked uh, the, the microbiome, where we checked our microbiome in the beginning, in the middle, at the end, and after three months, uh, after the fasting cure, and um, so it's just very, very uh, exciting to work with such high-profile uh, scientists together. 
and then to see the results that were really as hoped and we have another YouTube video about that that I really encourage uh, people to watch if you if they haven't done it. Um, so when I'm not doing these uh, long fasts, I also have um, a routine of intermittent fasting uh, in my day to day. What I usually do, and again, this is my personal protocol, everybody has to uh, see for themselves what works best for themselves. So um, what I do usually is um, sometimes I will have breakfast, sometimes not. Me personally, I skip my lunch um, just because I feel my, I have a very good breakfast that serves me then. Uh, I usually have a muesli. We have also a link in the, uh, in the, in, in the videos. It's a muesli, it's a mix of fruits, uh, quark, uh, linseed oil. It's a good uh, base for the, for, for, for the morning and I have a coffee with that and then um, I will usually skip lunch and then I will have dinner uh, and our dinner is I really am a very avid cooker and here in the clinic we have um, um, a network of farmers and so we sell we don't not only give our clients uh, the fruits and vegetables that we have from our farmers but also we sell it to our personnel and so we can get um, a box of vegetables and fruits that are usually 12 to 14 kilos. And so when I go home and I make dinner, my goal is to diminish this box. And in this box, you have whatever is seasonal. And it's a wonderful exercise because you have to get creative because sometimes the boxes are very repetitive, you know, because something is just in season. And then you have to say, okay, you know, how can I make this maybe taste better? Uh, it's usually more of a plant-based dinner, but I'm not a vegetarian myself. I'm a, I would consider myself a flexitarian, so I will have some meat, some fish uh, occasionally, but the big portion will be uh, this plant-based food. And I really, you know, uh, look for good oils. Look for. We're not really dogmatic on what we use, as long as it's good quality. So. If I use a cheese, I will use a very good Parmesan. If it's an oil, it will be a very good oil. If I have a glass of wine, it has to be biological. So I really, really look for quality. And um, the beautiful thing is that if you look for quality, the taste also kind of follows up and the nutrient level also follows up. So um, if I'm not with friends or if I don't eat out, usually um, that's what I, that, that will be one of the days. And then throughout the days, we have a lot of water, some teas, maybe depending on the day I will have another coffee around noon. But then I, I, I cut the coffee consumption because um, it has a half time of uh, 12 hours. So we see that before 12, we, we, we stop the, the coffee consumption. Thank you for, for watching this video. We hope you found some inspiration in it. Uh, we would love to hear how you're doing things. So maybe to have a, an exchange. If you like this video, you can click the like button. And we have a lot of the things I mentioned in, uh, in this talk, we also have as uh, separate videos in our, in our YouTube channel. So um, if you want more inspiration and if you like this video, check out the other videos and um, have a great day and have a good fast maybe. <laughs>